everybody. Welcome back. Well, for today's community conversation, we have the El Paso Police Department back in studio with us today. Yes, joining us this morning is Sergeant Javier Zambrano to talk about Crimes Victims Rights Week, right? Um, so right. we want to go ahead and start it off. What is this week dedicated towards and how does the department hope to raise awareness for victims? Well, the Office of uh, Victims of Crime has a every year a National Crime Victim Rights Week. And so there, each year there's a theme. So this year's theme is what can we do? Uh, and talks about the services and different things that they're out there for crimes, uh, victims of, of crime. And so that, that's part of what we wanted to bring this topic today, remind the community uh, about our crime victims and what it is that they can do to actually help. Yeah, and let's talk about that. You mentioned services. Um, right. Can you talk about what the department offers um, in regards to support and services for people who are victims of a crime? Well, we have what is called VSRT, which is Victim Services Response Team. And so every regional command, including police headquarters, has a case manager that actually helps victims of crime being able to fill out paperwork related to the uh, Texas Crime Victims Compensation Act. They're also able to help crime victims understand um, everything about protective orders, uh, what are the next steps when they did become a victim of crime, and being able to uh, get compensation from those uh, services that are available out there for them. So uh, they become that liaison between um, all of the different services, which include not only governmental services, but also non-governmental uh, 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 agencies that assist victims of crime. Um, and particularly for victims of sex crimes, what does the department do to prevent future incidents? Tell us about the sex offender registration and tracking. Well, one of the important things to think about, especially when we talk about uh, uh, victims of sexual assault, it's, it's also very important and, and for people to make sure that those cases are reported. Um, traditionally, uh, it, it's, it's said that many victims go on without reporting those crimes. So it is very important that those crimes do get reported so that it can be investigated. But we do have our sex offender registration and tracking unit. Uh, and that unit actually uh, does checks uh, unannounced on those individuals that are registered as sex offenders in our community, making sure that they are living where they said they're living, they're working where they say they're working, and that they are staying to those requirements that they have. Um, they also, it, it depends, some of them have to register on a monthly basis, some of them on a yearly basis, uh, so ensuring that they're in compliance with all of that. And so that's what our SORT unit does. Uh, it is a small team, but it's a team that does actually a lot of work. I know that they stay uh, very busy, and that is actually also an additional thing that we do to help victims of crime by trying to prevent uh, individuals from committing crimes. Awesome, and you guys actually do have an event happening a little later today. Let's talk about that. Well, our Crime Stoppers of El Paso Board, now Crime Stoppers is a nonprofit, a 501c3, but we have a community hub, and so that community hub is in Bassett Place, and so today is gonna be the official ribbon cutting for our community hub. The whole purpose of the community hub at Bassett for Crime Stoppers is a place that is neutral and the community can go and learn how to stay safe. So it's gonna be, there's gonna be a variety of uh, different presentations from various law enforcement partners that we're gonna try to be having on a weekly basis. So we'll be announcing that. That'll be on the Crime Stoppers website as well. And we're gonna have also some of our coordinators that are gonna be out there uh, at least a few times uh, during the week for anybody that may wanna stop by and uh, say hello or, or learn a little bit more about what Crime Stoppers does. Awesome, thank you so much. And Thanks, every guys. week we actually ask our viewers on Facebook yeah. to ask some questions, submit questions that they have for the El Paso Police Department. So right. Sergeant Sombrano is gonna stick around and answer those directly for us in just a little bit. Yes, Absolutely. we'll be right back after the break. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Well, every Wednesday here on the KFOX 14 Morning News, we have the El Paso Police Department joining us. Today is Officer Sambrano, and he's going to talk to us about, he's actually going to answer some viewer questions. We've been asking our viewers on Facebook to submit questions that they have for the department. So, Jessica, take it away. All right. So, the first question <laughs> comes from Carlos Aguilar, and he's asking, why isn't there any traffic control at the Juarez exit? Like, we know there's a lot of traffic there. People are trying to cut in line from lane three, and they're causing huge huge backup. It's caused more than one accident in the area already. He says, I've seen patrol vehicles drive right on by. Well, unfortunately, uh, on that aspect, there is really not too much that the department itself can, can do. 
part of what happened in the problem that we've been seeing, there was a redesign that was done to that exit. When that redesign was, was done, a lot of the traffic or the only way to really access that does become from I-10. So one important thing that we want to remind all motorists is to give yourself enough time to get there. Also, the other thing too is um, there's sometimes, I know we get frustrated when we're waiting there in line, but not letting somebody come in right. just it causes or adds to the problem. So just have a little bit of patience. Sometimes we don't know the reason that that person might be uh, trying to get in at that moment. That might be the only opportunity that they had. So just a l little bit of patience. I know it's uh, frustrating for, for all of us, but unfortunately there's not really any type of traffic control that police could do to really alleviate that problem because it's it's the traffic that's flowing into into Mexico. And we've also, by the way, um, Diana Gomez, our traffic reporter, mm -hmm. has done the explanation of what that redesign was in case you want to go to our website and read yes. it and why TxDOT did rearrange things there. But it does, there is a lot of congestion. Yeah, yes. yeah. Moving on to our next question, let's take a look. Johnny Martinez is asking, can a police officer give out a restraining order or do you have to go to the station instead? Well, the police department does not deal with restraining orders. Um, so the police department will and this, this is a, something that's issued by, by a judge would be an emergency protective order and that is only in certain specific uh, instances. So for a protective order or anything of that nature, they can actually call even our victim services response team, uh, find out a little bit more about the requirements, but that would be uh, done through the courts. Uh, also the county attorney's office can help them as far as for protective orders, but if they want to uh, call our uh, Police headquarters at 915-212-4011, uh, or even they can send us an email at spd at El Paso, uh, Texas gov, and we'll be happy to uh, send them to uh, the persons that can help answer those questions for them. Great, and we've actually talked about protective orders here as well with mm -hmm. the county, so we have that up on our website as well. Our last <laughs> question coming from Leslie Ruiz, and she's asking, how often is police training for a mass shooting at schools? Uh, are they ready to respond adequately? Well, active shooter training has been going on in our department since the 1990s. So we've actually, every year, all officers uh, from the rank of lieutenant on down, we have to go through active shooter training. And so that's, that's a mandate that, that the department has for, for all of us. And we do have a variety of uh, life-based scenarios that officers have to go through. Uh, and. Uh, we, we continue to, uh, to train, and so that, that is obviously uh, something that, that we will uh, continue to do and uh, rest assured that um, our officers out, out there in the community are ready to serve and protect our community. Yeah, Sergeant Semprano, thank you so much. And I've actually been able to have the opportunity to see that training firsthand and yeah. just what it entails and how realistic it is. Can you talk about the importance of it being realistic and then you guys trying to implement those trainings in case something like this were well, to happen? Well, part of what, what uh, we do in, in our training and, and part of the reason that our training for even our recruits has become uh, longer has been because we've gone into scenario-based yeah. training. Uh, one of our uh, systems that, that we have, uh, it's called the Milo, which is a, a computer simulated uh, uh, almost a 180 degree type of, uh, of uh, scenarios where there's various scenarios of active shooters, other type of calls, and based on what the, uh, the way the officer is responding, verbal commands, other things that the officer is doing, is how the scenario will end up going. So the instructor actually has control, so it has a variety of different uh, results that can happen depending on how the officer is, is reacting. You did a feature story on that and how it all works as well, right? Yeah. I, I think you had an opportunity, yeah. right, to go through it, right? <laughs> yeah, it was, yes. it's fascinating, you know, how technology has evolved and how you guys are able to implement that into your training from recruits all the way up to lieutenant, um, as you said. So, yeah, you yeah. can find that on our website as well. I'm sure if you just type in the search bar on kfoxtv.com, yeah. Milo Simulator, you'll be able to see that for yourself. Yeah, we'll have that. We'll have all that information <laughs> as well as a replay of this community conversation on kfoxtv.com. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning. You're very welcome. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. We want to send things on over to forecaster Hannah Fresco.